Welcome to the Libra New Moon webinar of the cyclic meditation project supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The purpose of this project is to bring meditators from around the world to combine its intentions to strengthen the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. For this purpose we use the energies of Zodiac as it relates in its different qualities to distribution of 17 sustainable development goals and today we start our new phase in this project beginning with the goal 16 peace security and strong institutions and as we will be reflecting on this goal and meditating, we will use the energy of Libra to assist us in our work. Our guest today, our presenter today is uh, my dear friend and I can say my mentor, uh, Dot Maver. And uh, I really grateful to you Dad, for joining us today and agreeing to share your thoughts and your vision of the importance of the sustainable development goals and specifically goal 16 with all your experience in the area of culture of peace and conflict resolution so the floor is yours that please Thank you, Alexander, and thank you, Claire. And I trust that the voice is clear and it is a full screen, Alexander. Yes, I will make you now a presenter that you could share your screen. And yes, now we can see your screen. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be with everyone and uh, dropping the proverbial pebble in the planetary pond at this Libra new moon. And I have to give full disclosure, uh, this today is actually a group sharing, I merely give voice. Uh, seven of us, seven servers, have had input to this sharing. So let's approach our time together in three ways. The first, we'll set some context regarding Libra and the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Second, specifically SDG 16 and the culture of peace. And we will think through just a little bit institutionalizing peace. And then third, our work together concludes with a meditation. The seed thought for our meditation today through the impression and expression of certain great ideas humanity must be brought to the understanding of the fundamental ideas which will govern the new age. This is the major task of the new group of world servers. In the Libra New Moon energy, we seed one of these great ideas. UN Sustainable Development Goals, and specifically as they serve as a blueprint for the culture of peace on this beautiful planet we all call home. Now, Libra plays a leading role in peace consciousness, right human relations, justice and the law, sex and money. So our opportunity is at once to support thought forms of solutions 
and specifically the thought form of the culture of peace and how the UN Sustainable Development Goals support that great idea. And as Alexander shared, this seeds a 17-month opportunity for all of us to come together and support these thought forms of solutions. Elise Boulding was a humanitarian, a peace researcher, a peace educator, and a peace builder. And she said that a culture of peace is a culture that promotes peaceable diversity involving constant shaping and reshaping understandings, situations, and behaviors to sustain well-being for all. So let's look specifically at SDG 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. And this, sustain, uh, this Sustainable Development Goal 16, to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. So again, it seems this building of institutions and institutionalizing peace is worth our unity of thought. In order to talk about peace, let's just very briefly define peace. The wholeness created by right relationships with oneself, other persons, other cultures, and the earth and the larger whole of which all are a part. Simply put, peace is living in right relationship with self, others, and all life. So let's take a brief look at Libra and why the SDGs are a great idea whose time has come. We live in a stunningly difficult period of time. Humanity, the world disciple, is reversing on the zodiacal wheel. So it's hard for us to imagine just how fraught with disruption, destruction, and disorientation life will continue to be for a period of time, particularly as we are simultaneously making the shift from Pisces to Aquarius. Now the key is reorientation. And let's take note that Uranus, a ruler of Libra, assists with all things re. Rework, rethink, redo, recreate, reorient, and often in sudden, shocking, and dramatic ways. And Libra governs the transition between the ages in the larger cycles for a 500-year period this sign, a point of stillness, of balance, where the light moves to rest, a sign that always says, let choice be made, is playing a significant role at this moment in time. And in fact, Libra always ties together two differing energies, last century and this century, last year and this year, last age and this new age. Libra governs all the cycles, even day and night. It brings the one, the other, and the middle together, and it makes transitions easier, gentle, not so abrupt. Libra is emerging, blending energy, hence a lot of beauty, and creativity is released when Libra is prominent. So let's look at SDG 16 and the targets. And as we take a look at peace, justice, and strong institutions, what I will offer is an overview of each of the sections of the Sustainable Development Goal 16. And what I invite all of us to do is take a quick look at what those specific targeted goals are within each one. So we put this into our group consciousness and hold it in united group thought. 
16.1, reduce violence everywhere. And this is regardless of where anyone is on the planet and ultimately it states a proportion of the population feel safe walking alone in the area they live and I would submit that as we read through these and during this 17 month time together each one of these sustainable development goals let us hold the 100 percent that everyone will feel safe, that we actually will make violence history. End violence against children. And this includes all kinds of violence and note that torture is mentioned in SDG 16 as well. Address human trafficking. And let us take note that just last week, a movement in the United States was announced, Truckers Against Trafficking. It has great potential and gives us hope. Sixteen point three, promote rule of law and ensure equal access to justice for all. And as we look at this at the national and international levels, and for that matter at local levels as well, what comes to mind is restorative justice and the possibility of actually making the shift on this planet from punishment to restoration. 16.4. Reduce illicit financial and arms and light weapons flow. And as we look at, at this one, let us keep in mind that fairly recently we have had two UN resolutions with over 120 countries signing on that directly address not only a culture of peace but also address abolishment of nuclear weapons and this illicit financial weapons flow. Reduce corruption and bribery. Humanity has so much capacity and unmet needs drive behavior and there still tends to be a means of getting needs met by so many of us out here through corruption and bribery. So this becomes of essence. 16.6 six, Effective, accountable, transparent institutions and once again at all levels. Also if we read between the lines here what is being suggested is that public services live up to that name, public services, and that the bottom line has to do with consumers and service itself and of course rather than profit. 16.7 inclusive fair decision making and this as we see regardless of what we look like or how we choose to celebrate our divinity or how we live our lives that there is inclusive participatory and representative decision-making where everyone has a voice at all levels. All countries participate in the institutions of global governance and here the specific mention is developing countries so that again everyone at all levels has a voice. 16.9 basic human rights for all and as we look at those specifics let us keep in group mind that at the United Nations a very big question is being asked these days is peace a human right? 
1610 fundamental freedoms. And as we look at those fundamental freedoms as outlined in SDG 16, it brings to mind President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's four freedoms, the freedom of speech, the freedom to worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. 16a, institution building for capacity to prevent violence, terrorism, and crime. May we hold in our group mind, in unity, the culture of peace and proactive peace building in which violence, terrorism, and crime become things of the past. 16b, non-discriminatory laws and policies for sustainable development and international human rights. And once again, the thematic is that everyone has a voice. Everyone's needs get met. And that sustainable development becomes a way of life on this planet. Together, we are creating new systems, structures, and cultures that are no longer dependent on violence. Together, we are imagining, innovating, and creating the world we want to live in. Together, we are practicing patience, kindness, compassion, empathy, and love. Libra, the light that moves to rest. And Otto Sharma has said, developing the capacity to operate from the nothingness of the now, the ability to discern and take the next step in situations where old structures have broken down and new structures haven't yet emerged, is perhaps the most important core capacity of navigating work and life in this century. It's called the Storyteller's Challenge because it is our shared responsibility to tell the new story, which is indeed still emerging. So we're going to take just a moment together and think through where we are and where we're headed. So we take a look at the iceberg of violence. Now we know that 85% of an iceberg is below the surface. So what we're really talking about is cause and effect. So the effects, the symptoms, direct violence, the violent deeds and words we see, the symptoms we normally treat. And if we were to be at a whiteboard right now, it would not take us but a moment to put up numerous violent deeds that we are experiencing on the planet every moment right now. So what supports that direct violence though? Because that truly is a symptom and effect. Structural violence, the social, economic, political systems that wittingly or not result from and contribute to cultural and direct violence. And the social cultural violence, it becomes a cultural norm then, so that the norms and values actually legitimize and normalize the direct and structural violence. And one of the uh, premier examples is uh, gaming, all the games, that particularly that our young people are playing these days and most of them are quite violent. What if that were to shift to peace building, cooperative competition games based on the principles of cooperation, sharing, paying it forward, saving others, etc. So these all impact one another and that's pretty easy to see. So now put on your thinking caps. We have an iceberg of peace which is not yet well defined on this planet. 
what is direct peace? What are those deeds and words we see and hear that demonstrate human to human relations and human earth relations and human to all kingdoms relations in a spirit of nonviolence and cooperation. For at the heart of the sustainable development goals and SDG 16 in particular, we are talking about peace, living in right relationship with ourselves, others and all life. So what is the support system for peace? What structural peace look like? What is it? How do we do that? The social, economic, political systems that result from or contribute to cultural norming peace and direct action peace. So that we would have a culture of peace. What are those social norms and values that legitimize and normalize? So as we think that through, just for a moment, and we think of examples of direct, structural, and cultural peace. The SDGs give us some of those examples. In fact, they give us many of those solutions-oriented examples. And it is by human hands and feet that this will be resolved. So we're in crisis on the planet, and crisis presents both danger and opportunity. The danger of doing business as usual, in this case an overfocus on materialization and a selfish attitude to get needs met. The opportunity to take great strides in group work while realizing the nature of the soul, which is love and the will to good expressing through the principle of sharing. And Lieber's keynote, we choose the way which leads between the two great lines of force, starts us off on this journey. Libra, as we are in this 500 year period as well, as, as Libra governs the shifting of the ages. Peace in its true sense is a state of consciousness that demonstrates outwards from a deeper source of our being, urging the building of new structures and modes of expression, inspired by the vision of the oneness and the interdependence of all life. Peace is a dynamic, progressive state of awareness that manifests in an environment of sustainability within which is found that living substance from which we may create a new world, a new culture wherein progress is assured for every person, indeed for every form of life on the planet. We're moving beyond the point of balance between polar opposites such as have, have not, wealthy, poor, conservative, radical, good, bad. We are standing now at a point of balance between a world of opposites and a world of oneness and harmonious relationship within the soul. And the ageless wisdom guides us as a human family. Standing at this point, do we allow the habitual patterns of the old to draw us back down with it? Or do we move forward and further into realization of the one life in which we live and move and have our being? May the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. So we move into a dialogue period, discussion period, and Alexander and Claire, I think you're going to explain how that happens. Thank you, Dot, for your deep thoughts and uh, this vision, the new vision of the triangle, the iceberg of peace, uh, I think it can lead us to our discussion and we welcome any uh, thoughts and comments uh, from anyone in the audience uh, and if you would like to contribute please uh, use the function raise your hand, uh, it's a button on the control panel and we will unmute you. Uh, or you can write your uh, comments <coughs> in the question section. 
of the control panel. Mm. So as people are raising their hands, we hope, I want to just share one uh, thought I'll, I'll intersperse with some uh, discussion points from the seven of us. The implementation of Goal 16 will bring people closer to a realization of the interconnectedness of all life and humanity's essential unity. also want to say that it's so hopeful that Libra is the sign, that point of balance that governs from that still point these major, major changes, cyclic changes, all the great cycles changing at once that we are experiencing. It's a very diplomatic sign. And diplomacy will lead to change and to peace. I've mentioned in the beginning uh, of the webinar that this webinar today starts the new cycle uh, for uh, 17 webinars where each webinar would go for each goal and um, as we were preparing the schedule we would try uh, we try to match uh, astrological qualities of 17 uh, signs of 17 months ahead of us to each goal and it just uh, was um, in a way logical uh, combination of Libra and goal 16 mm -hmm. but as I was listening to uh, your presentation that I uh, realized that in a way this goal is a synthetic goal for uh, all other goals. It's like a pinnacle of that pyramid. It's uh, <clears throat> all other goals lead for this uh, to this result that's uh, declared in the goal 16. Mm. Yes, in fact um, the discussion that we had in, in preparing this was included this note Peace is offered as one of the 17 SDG strategies. It seems that peace is indeed the essence of the new era, not the goal or a strategy, rather the natural outcome result of great ideas realized, with a focus on right human relations, cooperation, goodwill, sharing, etc. So agreed, Alexander, that in fact, if we look at the SDGs as a blueprint for the culture of peace on the planet, it does become an essential thread uh, that, that weaves through the entire uh, context, content. There is a comment from uh, uh, Eliza. Uh, fabulous uh, done talk. Great, uh, greatly appreciated and inspired. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza. Yeah, gratitude, Eliza. So I'll share another, another voice. Peace and justice seems to depend largely on people who have a voice speaking up for the voiceless, the rivers, forests, endangered species, the homeless, the children, etc. The Libran choice is do the right thing, leading to an ever-evolving balance and peaceful harmony. You know, when you mentioned, Alexander, that uh, the triangles, uh, it's a, a wonderful uh, thought piece, thought-provoking piece uh, in classrooms, in town halls, in study groups, etc around this direct violence and direct peace. How do we actually make that shift? And I, I think it's significant that we just ho at least hold in our thought, even if we don't speak to it today, once again this institution building, institutionalizing peace. We are beginning to see on the planet ministries of peace, circles of peace, 
cooperation circles through uh, interfaith groups with a focus on peace building, peace education, national peace academies. I mean, we could go on and on. And, and that is, we are actually building now an infrastructure on the planet that we don't quite yet have the social and political will to support as we might. And this seems the shared responsibility, the role of the group of servers as we gather to really put the heft of our thought in this solutions-oriented approach and to think through together this institutionalizing the culture of peace, what that really looks like. I, one of my favorite conversations, as you know. So that's, uh, let us all be precipitating that. And I think it's especially true as we enter into the age of Aquarius with the emphasis on the uh, group cooperation where contribution of each individual and each group in the larger network of groups counts towards the final result and mm. yeah. the, if we think about this functional infrastructure, the new infrastructure, it will bring that note of responsibility of each one involved mm. and that comes as uh, soul awakens and we get awakened to our own responsibilities so it's the mm. process that's uh, objectively happening in the world now and it's up to us to see, to try to find the ways how we can organize ourselves in effective communication with each other, with people around us, those who respond to the same impulse. Yes. People next to us in our communities or maybe on other continent, but with whom we can still work together uh, for the same purpose. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well articulated. So let me share one more uh, input and then um, if there's anyone who else who wants to share, otherwise I suppose we can uh, move on to the uh, Libra New Moon meditation. The beauty of a culture of peace is that it represents a total shift in consciousness that is growing across the planet. This new consciousness will no longer tolerate violence as a means to settle conflict on any scale, which will ultimately bring about the fulfillment of SDG 16. We'll say in response to that, <clears throat> that it takes us once again to the growing uh, necessity of restorative justice and restorative practices as the criminal justice system in so many countries now is gradually, steadily shifting from punishment to restoration. As we're talking about a living economy and a sharing economy, as we're talking about health care for all, as we're talking about each of the various pieces, uh, business, the intersection of purpose and profit, uh, it really is a total shift in consciousness to think about a culture of peace, direct peace rather than direct violence. Uh, Dot and Alexander, can I just add a little word? Dot, thank you so much for um, this morning's presentation. I just wanted to share um, a little bit about what's been happening in New Zealand lately, which feels to me like a direct uh, manifestation of the concepts that you've been discussing this morning, or that we've um, been holding in, in, in our vision this morning. And that is that we've just learned that our um, labour 
candidate has become uh, has been nominated as um, prime minister for our country, and we've been through some pretty dark times with um, quite severe levels of child poverty and suicide rates and um, mm. inequity in healthcare and. Um, it's just very inspiring and hopeful to um, feel as though we're entering a new chapter here, which is defined by hope mm. and by a will to good. And um, interestingly, too, it being Libra, her nomination and um, has actually come on on um, a public holiday which New Zealand celebrates, which is actually called Labour Weekend. And she's the head of the Labour Party, so it feels like a wonderful. Um, conspiring of forces and positive energy. So I just wanted to share that um, mm -hmm. with the group. With the group. <clears throat> it seems to be an illustration of what you've been saying, Todd. Yes, thank you, Claire. You know, this, is, this is part of our job, we're the storytellers. I, I see, Alexander, that Bob Jordan has a hand up. Uh, yes, uh, so I will unmute Bob. Hello, Bob. If you raised it by mistake, sorry, but you have a chance to say something as you unmute it now. Please. but no pressure. Thank you. Um, so I think uh, we can move uh, into the next segment of the webinar and uh, so that please. Uh, so let's say just a couple of things about Libra before we go into our meditation together. And this is uh, from Esoteric Astrology. You know, it's the first time in planetary history that uh, for us, when as Aquarius is ruling, that only when Aquarius rules and a man is a world server and becoming group conscious can this desired objective of manifestation of planetary service and an era of peace begin to demonstrate. It is beginning to happen today for the first time in planetary history. Made me think of what you said, Claire. Yeah, let us continue to tell those stories. And again to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, USA, if civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationship, the ability of all peoples of all kinds to live together and work together in the same world at peace. That speaks to Libra, and again it speaks to the sustainable development goals. So with this story in Aquarius happening at the same time as that the shifting is happening on the planet and Libra, the light that moves to rest is the light that oscillates until a point of balance is achieved. It's the light that is distinguished by a moving up and down. And, of course, along with Gemini, the only two inanimate signs and relatively quiet Libra is. And yet when that stillness point, that point of balance is achieved, is a powerhouse. So as we choose the way which leads between the two great lines of force, let us remember that Libra is one of the four arms of the Cardinal Cross. Accounting for our difficulty in understanding the real nature of the influence of Libra. The significance of the energies working out into our solar system through the medium of the four arms of the Cardinal Cross or from the four constellations Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn can be summed up in four words. Creation, manifestation, legislation, initiation. Cosmically, they mean the activity of deity when spirit and matter are brought into a definite relationship and under divine purpose produce that fusion of living energies which will be adequately potent in time and space 
to bring that purpose to its desired consummation. The key for Libra, legislation, Libra inactivity, the working out of the plan under spiritual and natural law, which is evolutionary in expression. This is the goal of evolution and its expression and is steadily revealing the nature of God for the laws under which this solar system of ours is governed are expressions of God's quality and character. And Libra's rulers are Venus, Uranus, and Saturn. So let us come together, strengthening the hands of the new group of world servers. <clears throat> Thank you. Group fusion. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. Mentally extend a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy, the planetary heart center. To the Christ, the heart of love within the hierarchy. towards Shambhala, where the will of God is known. Higher Interlude Hold the mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the new group of world servers mediating between hierarchy and humanity, responding to hierarchical impression, and meditating the plan into existence. Meditation. Reflect on the seed thought. Through the impression and expression of certain great ideas, humanity must be brought to the understanding of the fundamental ideals which will govern the new age. This is the major task of the new group of world servers.
precipitation. Visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love, throughout the planet, from Shambhala, through the planetary heart, the hierarchy, through the Christ, the new group of world servers, through all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. And finally, through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. lower interlude. Consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working out in the world through members of the new group of world servers, so building the thought form of solution to world problems. distribution. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.
Thank you, Dad. Thanks to everyone for participating in this work today. Please join our coming uh, webinars. On November 4th, please join the Scorpio Solar Festival webinar with Claire Bainon from New Zealand. We'll together we'll reflect on the theme of from the battle I emerged triumphant, joy and beauty. And our next uh, New Moon webinar will be on uh, November 19th. So please uh, join, continue in this cyclic work of strengthening the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Namaste.